We all know that uh, hot air rises, correct? Um, now, what does it mean, uh, what does it tell us about the density of hot air um, as opposed to cold air, okay? So, um, you may have been in a, uh, a house or something in the winter time and you've heated the, the top of the house but then you go down to the basement and you can feel there's a boundary between the cold and the uh, hot or the warm air, okay? Um, because of the fact that warm air is, um, <coughs> uh, it rises above cold air, okay? Uh, the reason for that is the same reason that um, uh, oil floats on water. Why does oil float on water? Because it has a lower density. Okay, There's uh, a lower density and so the higher density it's heavier um, it sinks down to the bottom. All right. So the lower density always floats on top of the substance with higher density. And it's the same thing with two gases. Um, the lower density gas, the warm air has a lower density um, than the cold air. Okay? So the fact that uh, warm air has a lower density tells us you, you know, you remember the density, um, density equals what? Mass divided by volume, right? So that means if I have the same mass of warm air as cold air, which one is going to have uh, a larger volume, right? If I have a constant mass, um, uh, you know, mass divided by a larger volume will give me a lower density. Mass divided by a smaller volume. In other words, the, uh, the warm air, I'm taking the same amount of gas, okay? So let's just say this uh, circle, enclosed in, in this circle, are a certain number of gas particles, okay? And these are warm. Now, if I cool it off, all right, um, without changing the number of particles, okay, I still have the same number of particles, but I've changed the temperature, all right? It increases the density because I have the same mass, but it's in a smaller volume. Same number of particles, same mass, but it's in a smaller volume than it was when it was warm. Alright, so uh, what we see here is my volume changes. Okay, my volume, how does the volume change? When I go from a warm uh, condition, okay, in other, uh, well let's uh, compare volume with temperature. My initial temperature here is greater because it's warmer than my final temperature. Right? And the volume is also greater than the final volume. Okay? So just like we did with Boyle's Law, we can do here um, with the volume and temperature we can write a proportionality, right? So volume is proportional to, um, and, and what kind of proportionality is this going to be? This time, as temperature increases, the volume increases. So it's directly proportional. So volume is directly proportional to temperature, or I can write this as volume equals some constant, I don't care what the, the value of that constant is, some constant times the temperature. 
right? And uh, so if I solve for the constant, what do I have to do? I need to divide both sides of this equation by the temperature to cancel. And I have this constant equals the volume divided by temperature. Okay? So um, let me uh, move this up a little bit. And my volume divided by temperature is constant. And just like before, so in other words, as my volume changes, my pressure, or rather my temperature changes just to compensate that so that as the volume changes, when I divide it, the constant doesn't change. In other words, when I divide my initial conditions, it's the same as when I divide my final conditions. It gives me that same constant. Right? And so I can simplify this down to V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Okay? This is known as Charles law. Okay? And um, so the relationship between volume and temperature um, is known as Charles law, while the relationship between pressure and volume is Boyle's law. Okay? This is a simple demonstration of Charles' law. Charles' law relates temperature to volume. So here I have a uh, beaker with water in it and a test tube. And uh, I have filled the test tube with water so that just a small amount of air is in uh, the uh, bottom of the test tube there. Right? So I'm going to heat that air, um, which is a gas, and we'll see what happens to the volume of that gas as I heat it. Okay? So heating the gas, what do you see happening? As I heat it, the gas expands and it pushes the water down further into the test tube. Okay. Now, as it cools off, uh, the uh, water will come back up in the uh, test tube uh, because the cooler gas will occupy less space. And so it will draw up water back into the test tube. And you can see that slowly but surely happening as the gas cools off. You can see that the water level is increasing uh, or raising ever so slowly. All right. So this demonstrates Charles' law, the relationship between volume and temperature. As the temperature increases when I heated it, the volume increased as well.